Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We share our stories to encourage and equip each other to live out our faith in Jesus. We are so glad you're here. Having people into our homes is so much fun, but often we can become intimidated by hospitality and put way too much pressure on ourselves. Lauren McClellan, Meredith Todd, and Lynn Kitchens talk about what it looks like to invite people over and put the focus on loving their guests. They talk about fighting through comparison, choosing vulnerability, laughing at their mistakes, and prioritizing just opening their doors. Here's their conversation. Hi, welcome. I'm Lynn Kitchens, and glad to be here with my friends Lauren and Meredith, who I've known for quite a long time. Meredith Todd grew up at Christ Chapel, so I get to, got to watch her grow up. And um, her smile is famous at Christ Chapel, and so I love looking at it right now. And Lauren has been here over 20 years, and she's got two married children. Meredith has two young children, and Lauren has been a part of just opening her home up for a long time in the church and cares about discipleship and lots of spiritual things. So I feel so happy to have them here because they have a lot to share about our topic, which is hospitality. And we think this is an important topic because there is a depth that we believe to hospitality that we just might not consider, and if we talk about it today, we can really encourage everyone in the ministry of hospitality. So first, we're going to talk about what is hospitality? What what do we think of when we think of that word? I think it's a word that we don't use very often, or maybe it's a word that even is a little bit intimidating, but I wanted to look it up. When you asked me to do this podcast, I thought, I'm going to look up what hospitality means, and it talked about it's a relationship kind of between the guest and the host, and I think what it isn't that we often get confused is that it's not entertaining. Um, when we entertain, it feels a little bit more like we have to put on a show, and I think when when you think of it from that angle, it makes it more about the host, but if we think about it more from being as being hospitable and it being about the relationship, then it puts the emphasis more on the guest. And so I liked looking it up and, and contrasting what those two things mean. Mm-hmm. I love that difference. And it, I always think of hospitality as a way of anticipating someone else's needs, which goes along with what you said. It's it's not to entertain. It's really to host and to love on them and have an opportunity to really be selfless and think of other people's needs and put that that those first, whether it's thinking of snacks they might like when they're at your home or if they're staying overnight or for the weekend, thinking about making the guest room comfortable for them. Exactly. Um, so it, 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 I like that difference that you made. Yeah, that's so important. I think so too. Those are great points. I can remember years ago, we would have you know, different speakers at the church and they were from the seminary. And one time we had actually the president at that time of the seminary And my husband, Ted, and I, when he was finished preaching here, we just said, hey, come on over for lunch. And he just stopped and stared at me, and his mouth kind of dropped open, and he said, no one ever invites us into their home after I preach at the church. They just take me to a restaurant. And I saw the joy on his face, and I saw that he was happy, and he felt, like you just said, Meredith, more cared about. He felt like we really cared about him uh, by bringing him into our home. So I think hospitality is a lot about opening not only our home, but we're opening our heart when we have people into into our homes. Uh, So why do we practice hospitality? I mentioned it's a ministry. What do you all think about that? Oh, I definitely think it's a ministry. I know that, you know, As a Christ follower, we're called to love on people. We're called to care for people. I mean, that's one of the best ways we can do it. Um, And then I think just, you know, just thinking about everything that we have is really God's anyway. And so we need to use that for Him. And then it's just kind of a, a spiritual gift, I think, that allows us to stretch ourselves and grow ourselves, even if it, we're not super comfortable with that. Um, 
I just think all these things just allow us to, you know, raise up our relationship with the Lord, maybe introduce people to the Lord for the first time. Sometimes if we're, you know, praying or whatever, I just think there's it's so important that we're loving on people that way. And yeah. You never know how yeah. the Lord will use your hospitality right. for the immediate blessing or a long-term blessing. I mean, one example I think of is my, my parents always did a great job of hosting people in their home, and a big impact that um, that skill that they had of being able to host people really poured into me and future generations because it was the first Christmas that my husband, Heath, my now husband, we were not married yet, they, he was invited to my home for Christmas. And we met when we were older. So at this point, we've been to other people's homes that weren't our families for certain holidays. And so you always know kind of what it's like to be in someone else's home celebrating a holiday. It can be awkward or sometimes just downright not as much fun as your own home. So I think he probably went in with those same sort of lowered expectations, but my mom uh, put different nativity scenes at each place setting um, from around a, a different country, and that provided conversation because every person had a different place setting that revolved around that. Um, she had some questions kind of ready that to make sure people from— outside of the family and inside the family could always relate. Um, and just those certain little tidbits of, of thoughtfulness really poured out into my husband, and he enjoyed his time there, and he left there and said, wow, that was so much more enjoyable than I ever thought. And because of that one act of service that my parents did on that day, when we ended up being married and now we have kids, he looks forward to spending holidays with his in-laws, which is not always the yeah, case. So right. you just never know how kind of doing things a little differently or going a little bit more above and beyond can really poor blessings for future generations. Yeah, I always thought I wanted to live by your mom because she'd tell me <laughs> in her neighborhood, well, I had all the neighbors over, and it was always wonderful things like that, and there was, was sort of the home everybody wanted to be at. So, yeah, I thought about homes uh, in the Bible when I was thinking about this because I wondered, is hospitality mentioned very often? And so there are a lot of verses about it, and there's one that even says, be hospitable without grumbling, which is a good warning for us. But then I also thought about the people that were hospitable to Christ and Mary and Martha and Lazarus and all the times that they had Jesus over into their homes. And I really think because they did that, they had the privilege of learning some deeper things about Jesus than the average person would because he spent so much time in their home. And I realize, you know, that's really true when we have people sitting next to us in our own home. We get to delve deeper into who they really are. And that blesses them and that blesses us. And it's also a great privilege. And I know for me growing up, I had the benefit of having others show hospitality to me when I was a young woman. And I learned from that that, um, you know, it's all about really sacrifice, and that's the way of Christ, to put others' needs really before our own needs. And um, I loved that. I also was blessed by just learning what it means to be a godly woman when I'd be in those homes as well, and what it means to have a Christian family. I could witness a lot of those things when someone was being hospitable to me. So I know you two have been blessed by others' hospitalities too. Yeah, so. I love hearing what you said about that, Lynn. Um, I came into my husband's life, and we started dating in high school, and so I spent a lot of time at his parents' home, and it I wasn't um, a Christ follower at that point in my life, but there were things that stood out to me about the way my mother-in-law ran her home. It, that home was constantly open for um, other people to use it. I mean, all kinds of activities took place in that home, but there was just something about the way the home felt that even though I couldn't wrap my mind around what it was, I knew that it was, I wanted it. And so years later when I came to know the Lord, and Scott and I started our own home, I knew that I wanted my home to feel and be used the way my mother-in-law had used her. So I am so grateful for that example that was set out. And yes, that she showed me just, you know, how to use things for, for Christ, how to 
nurture relationships through the home. And so I, I love that part because that is where you get deeper in your relationships when you just allow this time and create a, a place mm-hmm. for vulnerability. And so I definitely am just so grateful for that example that my mother-in-law set out for me. And I think like restaurants, we meet people at restaurants a lot, and that's wonderful and that's good. But if that's all we did, you know, how deep would we get right. in some of those relationships? And how well would we be meeting some of the needs that our guests really have in their life? So, yeah. How about you, Meredith? Have you seen a lot of those examples? I think you have. You just already shared about your mom. Oh, yeah. I mean, there. you know when you go to someone else's home how it makes you feel. And so I think that that's what, what I always think of when I have people in my home. It is such a blessing both ways. And you're right. If you're at a restaurant, um, you can be easily interrupted by constant commotion going around you, the waiter or the waitress coming up um, and feeling like you're on a time constriction. But there is mm-hmm. something just extremely relaxed. I think about the times I've gone to your house, Lynn, you said, um, mentioned how you learned so much growing up and going into other people's homes. The Every time I've been to your home, I find a new nook that is so comfy and cozy mm-hmm. to sit in. It just invites conversation. And so you clearly have been poured into, and now you are putting those blessings out on, on other people. So it is it is around you, and it always looks different, right? It doesn't always have to be a, an elaborate meal. Um, it could be a coffee date. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many different ways to dive in and get to know one another in each other's homes. Right. So I know you do a lot. What, what are some ways you like to show hospitality, Meredith? You're such a versatile, creative kind of <laughs> young woman. <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, I will say that we do some different things. Um, Sometimes my husband and I do renovate homes, and we have had such a a good time right when we buy the home having people come over when we know we're about to demo the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We don't ask people to bring hammers and and join in on that. Instead, I think we do something far more exciting in that we put crayons, markers, glitter, um, scissors, glue, and (laughs) let the kids go wild. A dream come true. Yeah, Yeah, that's that's a for them. (laughs) And it's really neat because they feel like they're included in the fun and they're part of it, but also they're so engaged and entertained and the parents aren't having to worry about the mess um, that their kids are making because that's actually invited. So it can kind of be a a relaxed and fun um, event for everyone. One. And honestly, it's the, the, the simplest way to host. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I think about when my kids were young, I, and again, in thinking about this, doing this, uh, this podcast on hospitality, I think this is something I've always enjoyed because when the kids were young, I wanted to have their friends over. And yes, most moms do want to have the kids at home and get to know their friends, but it went kind of beyond that. It went just, I just wanted to kind of take care of them, serve them through food, make them feel welcome. And I realized, you know, that not every home they went to probably felt the same way as ours did. And I I just have to believe that, you know, seeds were planted in their hearts. Maybe they wonder, maybe there's going to be something as they look back even now as to the McClellan home felt different. There was something there. Mm -hmm. And so I loved just uh, caring for those kids. And then my husband and I have an, uh, an archery range where we live. My husband is an avid bow shooter. And so we uh, love to look out and we just open that up to anyone that needs space to shoot their bow. And so it's fun multiple times during the week. I'll look out and there's someone just out there shooting the bow. And I that makes me so happy when I look mm. and just see that it's being used and it's blessing somebody else that may not have that space if they live in town, that they mm-hmm. can do that. And um, we love to open our home to young couples that are newly married and just kind of walk with them. And again, I love to just pour into them with our time, but I, I enjoy caring for them through food and different things like that. And so mm-hmm. I think the ways that we do hospitality are kind of endless and there there's mm. definitely not a precise way that you have to do it. It can look differently based on our personalities, and it can look different based on our homes and look differently based on who's coming over. Right. I think so, too. Yeah, when you talked about having young men over that maybe were single or single again, I can remember Tyler bringing his friends over, our son, when they were in high school, and one day he said, well, the reason we all come here is because you make brownies. 
And uh-huh. so I actually got a speeding ticket because one time he told me that. <laughs> and they all came over, and it was 1030, and I just thought, you I've just got to speed up and get a brownie mix or something at the, at the store. So I got a ticket on the way, but hey, it's Those still... were expensive brownies, but worth it, right? <laughs> yeah, worth they it. never knew how expensive yes. they were. Yeah, um, I've loved having showers in my home and the church staff over in the past because I loved what happens when you have even more than just a few people over. You're connecting people and you're building unity and sort of a support system between people when you're all having the same experience together in a home. And so I've really loved that. And I've loved the fact that hopefully my kids learn some of that, as you were talking about, Lauren, and learn that people matter. It's Mm -hmm. a a wonderful way for us to teach our kids people matter. And sometimes I'll go over to my daughter's house, and my two granddaughters are in there, and they're watching a show. And my daughter jumps up and turns off the TV and says, people matter more than That's screens. So good. Yeah. And and I love it. And they probably are not happy with their grandmother because I just turned off their show. <laughs> but they they are learning what Cassie's trying to teach them, that when someone's in our home, they're the most important thing. So even though we know all these great things, why do we sometimes you know, hesitate to have people over. Oh, I well, I'll be honest with you. When when you asked me about doing this podcast, I, my initial thought was, I have just not done a good job of actually being hospitable and having people into my home over the past couple of years. And I'll touch on that in a second. I want to also first say that um, then I realized, wait, no, this week I had— um, Two boys come over when their parents had a little slip up with a babysitter situation. So I said, "Come over. We'll do. Di- they can have dinner with us, and we'll work it out. You guys go do your obligation." The next night, my son had a sleepover with a couple boys. Um, I mean, so I am doing it. It might just not be big planned events, mm-hmm. but the reason why I know I haven't done it in the last couple of years as often as I would like is I've just realized I've started to feel inferior. I think um, as we're in a new newer neighborhood to us and. A lot of the homes are grander than mine. They're more decorated than mine. They um, maybe have the time to put something together a little bit more special, in my opinion, than what I could do. So I just let myself say, oh, I can't. it's not what I'd want it to be, so I don't host. And that I, I, I need to get over myself. So, so I had a similar experience. I, when, I, when we first moved out to the community that we live in, I got invited to be in a Pequino group, and I, I loved this group, but every month we went to someone, a different lady's house, and I knew that I was eventually going to have to host, and so this was the month I went to someone's house, and then the next month it was my turn, and on the way home, I was having all those kind of thoughts, just the comparison and just maybe my, my home, it won't be good enough, or just the things that I think we as ladies feel sometimes, and mm. I remember the Lord just starting to kind of press in on my heart, just you know, is there anything that I've not provided for you? And is there anything else that you need? And I mean, my answer rhetorically, I was like, no, I have everything that I need. And he just said, then open your home and let all that go. Let the comparison go. And honestly, that was like a a thing that I remember just going back to going, there's always going to be those that have more and there's always going to be those that have less. God just wants us to use our things and bless people with what we have. And so that was a big, big moment in my life. So I think comparison holds us back. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes just fear of failure or maybe thinking we don't cook well or different things like that. And I think, you know what, there's ways around that. There's, you know, get a pizza or something and, um, or maybe just not wanting to open ourselves up and being vulnerable. I think it's semi-vulnerable to open up your home and letting Mm -hmm. people come in and maybe see your imperfections where if you're out and about, if you just want to meet at Starbucks uh, for coffee, you can come and look a certain way. You can present a certain image, I guess. But if someone comes in your home, it is more vulnerable. And so I think sometimes we want to keep that maybe um, shut off. So I think there's lots of things um, that hold us back from opening up our homes. I remember for me, it was just wanting my food to always be good. And and I had many meals (laughs) where my food was not good. And 
one time the people left and I was thinking about, you know, having more people over and what would I make? And I just stopped and thought, you know, I'm caring more about the green bean casserole than I am about the person Mm -hmm. when I'm thinking that hard about the food and not, how is this person doing? How can we encourage this person? Uh, So all of those things we do have to just kind of recognize and say, do these things really matter? And they really don't. Yeah, I definitely have been guilty of just being a little too hard on myself through the years. And and I think the more I practice having people in my home, I've gotten uh, to where I've lowered the expectations on myself mm-hmm. a little bit. But I, I definitely, that resonates with me, being a little bit majoring in the, in the minors right. and not focusing on the things that really, the whole reason you want people over is to make the connection. Mm-hmm. It really isn't about the the food like you're saying right or else I'll think okay I know I make these three things really well you do the same I'm thing. just did I have this with them last time yeah, you got to keep over? a journal <laughs> same yeah. rotation yeah. oh my goodness I would encourage <laughs> uh, the woman listening or or man listening to this who maybe still feels a little bit intimidated is yeah to start small like you said it is vulnerable to have people in your home and to see a little bit more of you in your world but you can say come over for coffee and I actually have to be somewhere at ten so it might be short but I'd love for you to come by for an hour. And that helps me. If that helps Mm -hmm. you feel more comfortable starting with those baby steps of inviting people in, it's an easy way for you to have an end time so you don't feel like you're going to be trapped too long. And coffee is just in maybe one area of your home and there's not a big preparation and there's certainly not big cleanup afterwards. Yeah, and the food, like you said, the food and the drink isn't the big part of it. It's Mm -hmm. not the main part. Well, and in thinking about more like obstacles to why we don't do this, I was chatting with a friend today telling her that I was going to talk about hospitality. And she said, you know, that is just a word that I don't use very much. And she said, when I say it, it even kind of makes me get, it's scary, scary for me. Like that word just overwhelms me. And she said, I'm much more comfortable with the word of, hey, do y'all just want to come hang out? She said, when I take the word hospitality out of, out of the thought and consider it more a hangout, all of a sudden, my comfort level just is much more there, and it just feels better to me. So mm-hmm. if the word hospitality feels at all scary for anyone that's listening, I think if you think of it as just having somebody come over and hang out, even if you're hanging out for coffee, that might take some of the scariness away. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think it's real great. And there's always other ways to be creative, too, um, as far as in the season of life I'm in now with with two little kids. We've done it with groups of friends where um, I'll, I'll hire the one sitter, and they come over, and everyone can bring their kids, and the kids can be in one area, and the adults can hang out in that area. I mean, certainly, it's, it's sometimes it's good for all of us to be together, but it ends up feeling like a real party for the kids, and then there's the adults have a little bit more relaxing time. Or you can also do in our small group, our home group that we we participate in. All the kids go to one house, and there's two sitters there to manage all of those kids, and then all the adults go to another house. So you mm-hmm. can get creative without having all 10 couples coming to have to find their own babysitter and coordinate all of that. I mean, it depends age ranges, of course, but I think the kids have a good time, and they're almost better behaved with the sitter and all being together. Yeah, it gives you opportunities. Okay, sometimes you like to have your kids be involved. What what does that look like? Um, well, I, one thing I will say, talking about the blessings, again, of hospitality, is I have just seen within my own kids how they've naturally picked up on what it's like to host and think of other people. Um, I still remember my son's third birthday party, and we were having a ton of people come over to our home, and he specifically asked at age three to put all the bags together, and he spent quite a bit of time doing all of that, getting all the bags ready. And I think he knew that, you know, after a birthday party, a lot of people take have a takeaway home. And he knew how in special or how special it would be for his friends to have something like that. And I think that's why he spent so much time doing that. Um, and it he, had to bless him to think, you know, I really helped make this party a success. I yeah. Mean, I was part of it. And that's so true. he learned about serving and mm-hmm. the good things that come from that. Yeah. Yeah, they like to, and and my daughter too. I mean, she loves to jump in and help, and she'll try to cut vegetables or fruits if she can. Um, but also, even just talking about big things versus little times when you host people in your home, she has she knows what friends like what toys and what who likes to play upstairs and who likes to play in her room. And I just think that they are they pick up on learning about your friends, and that's mm. really what hospitality is, as we talked about. It's just 
thinking of others, putting their needs in the forefront. And I love being able to watch that. And um, I do want to circle back to just as we discuss this with kids and what they see, when I talked about my own hesitations of hosting, I would never want my own kids to think that what we had wasn't good enough to have people in our home. So that is, I mean, if that's not another reason to just get over yourself and have people come over, I mean, that's not the fruit that I want them to bear is of, of shame or thinking you're not good enough or that God designed us to host only if we had this size of a home or these sorts of d- things to serve. That's, that, that isn't how it was intended to be. So I certainly want to be an example. Right. Well, and I'm them. on the other side where my kids are now grown and married. And, um, and while we told them, hey, use your things, uh, hold your, hold your you know, possessions lightly, use them for the Lord— it's fun now to see them also opening their homes, and I know it's because the you know they watched us. Um, our home was open and had people using it, and like I said, using the the archery uh, range, and then just being in our home a lot. And it's just been a real blessing for me as a mom to see both my kids using their homes, and it looks different because they're just different couples and different personalities, but just to realize that that was a lesson that they caught and um, and that they're also um, replicating. It's really special to me. Oh, yeah. Okay, what about, I know that you've said, Lauren, you, you do better planning ahead so that you can feel like I can get this time in my home together. And you can sometimes be, Meredith, a little more spontaneous. So what does that look like? Oh, I... I I'll take the spontaneous one because I'm okay. the one that jumps at any chance. <laughs> no, I, my husband does love to cook, uh, so I'm blessed in that manner, which is a big blessing to everybody because I don't know how to cook at all. Um, and sometimes he'll get carried away, and if he's making one of his favorite things, he will double or triple the recipe or there ends up with so much food. And I love that he will just realize that maybe an hour or two before it's done and say, we are going to have a lot to eat tonight. So if you want to invite anyone else over, that would be great. And it's so great because it is a spontaneous invitation. There's no pressure on our family because it's not a prepared, planned ahead event. Um, And I just let everyone know it's come as you are. We haven't done anything either. So other than prepare this big meal and we'll do other fun things. And my kids do love to get involved in setting the table and bringing things out. And um, Oh, and but, you know, those people got that phone call when they hung up, they were all celebrating. Woo! Yes. Yeah. It, <laughs> we're luckily, going over uh-huh. to the dogs. <laughs> it is nice when you know you can take the pressure off someone else's yes. dinner plans. Well, yeah. and I love the spontaneous invitations that I don't roll that way quite as much. I'm sure there've been a handful um, of times that we've done that, I'm a little more of a planner. So for me, like I said, I've learned to lower the expectations that I have on myself. And so that just meant kind of planning ahead a little bit. Like if I knew that on Friday we might have a family over, then I just took the, I broke it down into smaller pieces so that on Friday I wasn't running around the hour before because that that was just a way to kill the fun for me. And so writing what I needed to do down and working the list kind of through the week. And again, it made it manageable when I had kids at home, made that manageable because I couldn't do it all in a day. And I'm thankful that I learned that, that it's much more fun if I kind of plan ahead. I I end up hosting a lot of my families. um, Well, I do. I host Christmas and Thanksgiving. And those are bigger bigger things to to have in your home. And so those definitely get the planning ahead for me. But again, taking them in smaller bites, it's so doable, you right. know, and the benefit way outweighs any of the effort that I put in. And I know we've talked a little bit about even doing potluck. If you want to make things easy, say, you bring the salad, you bring the dessert, I'll make a roast or whatever. We can, you know, help each other. And then Asking for help in the home, I know that my husband, Ted, he always wants to help. But I learned after many years that he would ask me early in the morning, what can I do to help tonight? And I would say, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. And then he'd disappear. And when the people arrived, I'd have to go find him, and he'd come out and welcome. But I was, meanwhile, running around trying to do everything at the last minute. And so... He wanted to help, and I didn't know how to have him help. And so now I say, okay, you have to be dressed and ready to go 30 minutes before they come. 
and then come in the kitchen and I'll see what's left. And so he comes in the kitchen and I say, cut the lemons, set the table, do whatever, things that I didn't get done. So there's usually someone hanging around the house that we can say, (laughs) you know, help us out here and um, help with what we need. So I think we can simplify things as well, make them easier instead of harder, have pizza, um, pick up something and just enjoy the relationships that are there in your house. So I don't think we've all had perfect things happen. <laughs> no, we all could not. tell a story or two. Uh, I can remember, and I mean, this was just maybe less than two years ago. I made this Mexican quiche for some neighbors, and they came over, and the quiche was about a quarter of an inch high <laughs> <laughs> and tasted crummy. And I could not figure out what happened, and it was sort of awkward, but we all sort of laughed about it. And when they left, I realized, oh, I never put the cheese in the quiche, which is a pretty important ingredient (laughs) when you're making quiche. And so later I saw them, and we all laughed about it. And I thought, you know, they may have driven to McDonald's on their way home from my house (laughs) that night. But it didn't in any way affect what else went on in our house. We had this time of sharing that really was meaningful. And so sometimes things don't go the way we want. No, and it's so good because that just shows you don't have to be perfect to host. And it actually just kind of probably made you more real to your guest. And so now when it's their turn to have you in their home, they're going to feel more comfortable doing it. I have a, a story as well. Uh, when my husband and I, um, not we probably hadn't been married that long, I wanted to have my in-law family in, and so his parents and his brother, and I'd cook some casserole, and we were doing green beans on the side and whatever else. And so I got everything ready and set out a serving line, and we all go through the serving line. And everybody starts to kind of eat, and I'm looking over at Scott's brother, and he's got kind of this look on his face, and then he didn't miss the opportunity to kind of heckle on me, and he (laughs) said something about, are the green beans supposed to be cold? And so then I frantically take a bite of the green beans to realize that I had opened the can, yes, I did can, opened the can, (laughs) put them in the, the... the pot on the stove and never turn the heat on. And so literally (laughs) they were seasoned and just room temperature or cold cold, and they weren't supposed to be. So he hasn't let me forget that. Um, (laughs) I'll have you know. So yes, that was a flop for me. Yeah, so we can have some fun stories with the flops. Oh, it's good. I I don't cook, so I can't tell any stories about (laughs) fails of cooking other than every time I've tried to cook. Um, But one time we were hosting a big group of people. Oh, it was my son's Another birthday party, not the three-year-old one. This was uh, actually a year ago. It was a Dude Perfect was the theme, which anyone with little kids will know. It's a lot of just games and silly stuff. So our at back backyard has several different doors that open up to the backyard. So we had all of them open. It, it was a perfect November day. It was great inside. What I didn't realize was that the playroom is upstairs in our home, and I guess it had a different AC system, which kicked on to heat with all the doors open. And a lot of the girls, I think they played the game a little bit. He had boys and girls from his school over, and a lot of the parents stayed. All these girls and their mothers were up in the playroom. I went walked upstairs just to say hi. It was probably a hundred degrees up there. <laughs> oh, that's okay. terrible. And these poor moms, I mean, they're just chugging their water. And I was mortified <laughs> because these are not close friends. And I just thought, oh my gosh, of all you know, especially the, knowing that everything happening downstairs was to kind of entertain and bless my son and his guy friends. And the girls that were up there just sweating. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, it, it is what it is, right? And I'm, right. I'm sure they had yeah. some conversations <laughs> about that. One hopefully went home and took a cold shower. And they, but yeah, maybe, and they had a fine time. And maybe we'll be referred to as the hot house That's for right. the rest of my son's elementary <laughs> That's school. That's right. That years? Yeah, know. they make for great stories, and they kind of actually end up getting people together because it sort of drops that barrier of of not knowing each other and not knowing what the expectations are, if you can just laugh together. So, okay, so last word on hospitality. What what can we say that really would be encouraging about hospitality? I think of the in it's in the details that people know you thought of them. And again, it doesn't have to be fancy or elaborate, but like 
if you're doing grilled cheese sandwiches, just do do enough grilled cheese sandwiches. Just let people know that you 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 knew to prepare and and have enough stuff. Just a simple fact that you thought of someone, I think just blesses them to know I knew you were coming, I thought of you, I have enough for you and to start small. Um I say just start small and if you've something if you haven't really opened your home or you've been afraid to do it, just don't let the lies of all the comparison and all that mm-hmm. swirl around in your head. Just be brave and start small, and it really opens up the opportunity to love on people and display your love for Jesus. Right. I I always think we can lift someone's spirits. I mean, how many people have we had in our home that leave feeling a little happier? They feel a little more listened to. Mm-hmm. They feel a little more loved, and in that sense, we can be the hands of Christ in someone else's life. I love that. I think about that verse, weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And that can't really happen so well in a restaurant or other places. It happens very well in a home. And we have the opportunity to be used by God like that. And so I think of an open home as really open arms. And what a privilege to get to love on people that way. Oh, that's so good. I know. I love that. And I would piggyback that with saying, don't forget that you yourself as the hostess will be blessed. I mean, I can tell you, one thing I can say with complete certainty is that every time we've had people in our home, I I cannot say that I've had any regrets. I mean, there have been the funny hiccups or, oh, the stress of cleanup, but I have always felt blessed. There has always been something new. I've learned about someone who's been in my home because of the fact that I was welcoming them into my home. Um, And it's... so. Not to do it as a self-serving way, but it almost is. I feel so blessed every time, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm so grateful I've married a man that loves to open his open his home as well so that we can do that together alongside mm-hmm. each other and getting to see it come out within my kids too. So you will be blessed. So I definitely encourage you to, to start small if you need to, but trust me, you, they will feel blessed and you will feel blessed. Yeah, yeah I love yes. that. That is so true. And I really have admired both of you for a long time and how you do this um, by caring about people, and that's why you do open your homes up. And so um, just expect me to drop by one of your <laughs> homes for dinner As tomorrow a, night. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure the green beans are warm. <laughs> oh, okay, good. good. I'll turn down the AC <laughs> <laughs> right now as we record this in the hottest summer of Texas. <laughs> that's right. Thanks for being here. Thanks Thank for you, who Lynn. you are. Thank you. It's Thank fun. you for having us. Oh, you're welcome.